What's up, everybody? This is kind of a, a special video, I guess, if you will. Everybody that knows me knows that America is the love of my life. Uh, liberty is the love of my life, and we live in the greatest country in the world. That's why I'm a deist. Um, I believe that the deist God is the best God, in my personal opinion. Um, I've tried other religions, but uh, I just have to keep going back to deism because... He cannot be contained, and he believes in freedom. He created us with free will. And if we observe the laws of nature and of the universe, I have to keep believing in a, a deist God. But um, the United States of America is a special place, and this is the only place in the world that has ever freed the common man and woman. This is the first time in history the common man and woman has ever been set free. And so today I'm going to do a reading of the Declaration of Independence. And um, if you guys want to listen, feel free. If you don't want to hear it, that's fine. But, you know, all the cookouts and the barbecues today, that's wonderful. That's great. But really today is really about liberty. It's about freedom for everyone. Uh, it's about self-rule and self-governance. And so I'm going to read the Declaration of Independence. And uh, if you want to stick around, stick around. If not, then don't. In Congress, July 4th, 1776, the unanimous declaration of the 13 United States of America when in the course of human events, it becomes necessary for one people to dissolve the political bands which have connected them with another, and to assume among them the powers of the earth, the separate and equal station to which the laws of nature and of nature's God entitles them. A decent respect to the opinions of mankind requires that they should declare the causes which impel them to the separation. We hold these truths to be self-evident, that all men are created equal, that they are endowed by their creator with certain unalienable rights, that among these are life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness, that to secure these rights, governments are instituted among men, driving their just powers from the consent of the governed that whenever any form of government becomes destructive of these ends, it is the right of the people to alter or to abolish it and to institute new government, laying, organizing its powers, I'm sorry, laying its foundation on such principles and organizing its powers in such form as to them shall seem most likely to affect their safety and happiness. Prudence, indeed, will dictate that governments long established should not be changed for light and transient causes. And accordingly, all experience hath shown that mankind are more disposed to suffer while evils are sufferable than to right themselves by abolishing the forms to which they are accustomed but when a long train of abuses and usurpations um, pursuing inevitably the same object invents a design to reduce them under absolute despotism, it is their right, it is their duty to throw off such government and to provide new guards for their future security. Such has been the patient sufferance of these colonies. And such is now the necessity which constrains them to alter their former systems of government. The history of the present king of Great Britain is a history of reputed injuries and usurpations, all having in direct object the establishment of an absolute tyranny over these states. To prove this, let facts be submitted to a candid world. He has refused our, uh, his assent to laws, the most wholesome and necessary for the public good. He has forbidden his governors to pass laws of immediate and pressing importance unless suspended in their operation till his assent should be obtained.
and when so suspended, he has utterly neglected to attend to them. He has refused to pass other laws for the accommodation of large districts of people, unless those people would relinquish the right of representation in the legislature, a right inestimable, inestimable to them and formidable only to tyrants. He has called together legislative bodies at places unusual, uncomfortable, and distant from the depository of their public records for the sole purpose of fatiguing them into compliance with his measures. He has dissolved representative houses repeatedly for opposing with manly firmness his invasion on the rights of the people. He has refused for a long time after such desolations to cause others to be elected, whereby the legislative powers incapable of annihilation have returned to the people at large for their exercise, the state remaining in the meantime exposed to all of the dangers of invasion from without and convulsions within. He has in endeavored to prevent the population of these states for the purpose of obstructing the laws of naturalization of foreigners, refusing to pass others to encourage their migration hither, and raising the conditions of new appropriations of lands. He has obstructed the administration of justice by refusing the assent to laws for establishing judiciary powers. He has made judges dependent on his will alone uh, for the tenure of their offices and for the amount of payment of their salaries. He has erected a multitude of new finances and sent hither swarms of offices to harass our people and eat out their substance. He has kept among us in times of peace standing armies without the consent of our legislature. He is affected to render the military independent of and superior to the civil power. He has combined with others to subject us to a jurisdiction foreign to our Constitution and un unacknowledged by our laws, giving his assent to their acts of pretended legislation for quartering large bodies of armed troops among us for protecting them by mock trial from punishment for any murders which they should commit on the inhabitants of these states, for cutting off the trade with all parts of the world, for imposing taxes on us without our consent. <laughs> if only Americans felt that, uh, you know, hardcore today about our government imposing taxes on us without our consent, what would we do? For depriving us, in many cases, of benefits of trial by jury, for transporting us beyond the states to be tried for pretended offenses, for abolishing the free system of English laws in a neighboring province, establishing therein an arbitrary government, um, and enlarging its boundaries so as to render it as once an example and fit instrument for introducing the same absolute rule into these colonies. For taking away our charters, abolishing our most valuable laws, and altering fundamentally the forms of laws of our government. For suspending our legislatures and declaring themselves invested with power to legislate for us in all cases whatsoever. He has abdicated government here by declaring us out of his protection and waging war against us. He has plundered our seas, ravaged our coasts, burnt our towns, and destroyed the lives of our people. He is at this time transporting large armies of foreign mercenaries to complete the works of death, desolation, and tyranny already begun with the circumstances of cruelty and perfidy uh, scarcely paralleled in the most barbarous ages and totally unworthy the head of a civilized nation. 
He has constrained our fellow citizens taken captive on the high seas to bear arms against their country, to become the executioners of their friends and brethren, or to fall themselves by their hands. He has excited domestic insurrections among us and has endeavored to bring on the inhabitants of our frontiers, the merciless Indian savages who, whose known rule of warfare is an undistinguishable destruction of all ages, sexes, and conditions. In every stage of these oppressions, we have petitioned for readiness in the most humble of terms. Our repeated petition uh, have been answered only by repeated injury. A prince whose character is thus marked by every act which, must, which may define a tyrant is unfit to be the ruler of a free people. Nor have we been wanting in the attention of our British brethren. We have warned them from time to time of attempts by their legislature to extend an unwarrantable jurisdiction over us. We have reminded them of the circumstances of our immigration and settlement here. We have appealed to their native justice and magnanimity. Our community kindred to dissolve. I'm sorry. And we have conjured them by the ties of our common kindred to dissolve these usurpations which would inevitably interrupt our connections and correspondences. They too have been deaf to the voice of justice and consanguinity. We must therefore acquiesce in the necessity which denounces our separation and hold them as we hold the rest of mankind, enemies in war and in peace, friends. We therefore, the representatives of the United States in general Congress assembled, appealing to the supreme judge of the world for the uh, rectitude of our intentions, do in the name and by the authority of the good people of these colonies solemnly publish and declare that these united colonies are and of right ought to be free and independent states, um, that they are absolved from all allegiances to the British crown, and that all political connection between them and the the state of Great Britain is and ought to be totally dissolved, and that as a free and independent states, they have full power to levy war, conclude peace, contract alliances, establish commerce, and to do all other acts and things which independent states may of right do and for the support of this declaration with a firm reliance on the protection of divine providence, we mutually pledge to each other our lives, our fortunes, and our sacred honor. So, that is the Declaration of Independence. This is the most beautiful country in the world. I've said it a million times. The Founding Fathers were very special men. And this was the only country on the face of the planet to ever set free the common man and the common woman. This is the greatest country on the earth. This is the greatest hemisphere on the earth. And we must continue to remember why this day is so important and so special. And we must keep fighting to support our freedoms and to make sure that the common man and woman can always govern themselves here in this great nation. Long live liberty. Long live the republic. Death to the new world order.